Welcome back to our series on introductory statistics. I'm Mark Ledbetter, and this is lecture video 14. We're in chapter 4, part 1. So we're starting with um, linear regression and correlation this time. So before we go on, let's review what we did in the last uh, section. In chapter 3, we talked about percentiles. Remember, if you're in the 90th percentile, that means that 90% of the values are below uh, your value. Quartiles, we had the 25th percentile, the 50th, the 75th percentile. And we used a method of finding medians. So we'd find the median to find Q2, and then we'd take the numbers below that median and find the median of those values to find Q1. And we'd take the values above the, the median of the whole data set. We'd take those upper values and find the median of that to get the third quartile. And then we did a five-number summary, which were the three quartiles plus the lowest or minimum value and the highest value. And we used those to make what we call a box and whisker plot. And from that, we could determine the shape of the distribution, whether it's skewed left or skewed right. So... In this chapter, we're going to uh, talk about this time, in this video, we're going to talk, out, talk about scatter diagrams and uh, introduce some correlation, and then uh, we'll have a few more videos on that, and then we'll talk about linear regression in section 4.2. So, this is one of the sections where, um, one of the topics where I fell in love with statistics. When I first took statistics, I was afraid of it, and I... Uh, thought I would do poorly, and I did well, but then we got to linear uh, regression, and I just fell in love with statistics because of how powerful it is. So um, the goals for this section uh, are that we want to... Uh, let me come back here. No, oh, no, okay. So the goals for this section are that we want to make a scatter, scatter diagram. We want to be able to visually estimate the location of the best-fitting line. We want to be able to use the sample data to calculate the correlation coefficient, and we want to understand the meaning of R, and I'm going to add that we want to test whether R is statistically significant. So you can't just say, well, it's a pretty high number, it's, it's statistically significant. It may or may not be. We have a formal test that we have to go through. Okay. So what is a scatter diagram or scatter plot? Well, it's a graph uh, using X and Y points, and we plot them. Uh, X is the horizontal axis, and Y is the vertical axis. And when we say grid, we mean that you could make a grid out of this and plot. Okay, X is called our explanatory variable, or you know, so this variable, we're, we're saying that it's going to explain what happens to y, which is a, our response variable. And we're only going to use those two words because uh, there are many words we can use for each of these, but it gets very confusing, so I'm going to try to keep the uh, vocabulary small. X is explanatory, Y is response. I suggest you write that down. <laughs> A scatter plot helps us determine if there's a relationship or what we call an association between X and Y. We are not determining whether X causes Y or not. We're talking about whether they seem to be related or not. So here's an example. It's a random uh, sample of eight sites in California wetlands. Uh, this study provides the following information about phosphorus reduction in drainage water. X is the phosphorus concentration in 100 milligram per liter uh, at the inlet of these, uh, um, it's a biotech um, facility that's cleaning the water. And so the water going in, that concentration of phosphorus is uh, given by X. And the water that comes out after it's been cleaned is the Y value. So we want to plot a scatter diagram and estimate the best fitting line. Okay. So I can tell you that a computer is usually used to fit the best fitting line, and we'll calculate how to do that in the next section. Not the next video, but the next section. So we're going to take these values. Here is X, and here is Y, and we're going to try to plot these. Now I'm using a um, 
ruler to try to do this, and I have ordered the values by x from smallest to largest, and I find that makes it a lot easier for me to plot. So the first value is 5.2 in the x and 3.3 in the y, and I'm going to say that that's about, let's see, nope, that's about 3.3, about here, okay? And then the next value is 5.5 .5 and 3.6. So let's see, um, let's see, I'm going to say that's about there. And then I have 5.9 and 4.5, uh, 4.5, let's say about there. And maybe I should zoom in so that this is easier for me to uh, plot a little bit. And then I have 6.1, let's see, 6.1 and 4.0. So I'm going to say that's about there. And then 6.7 and 4.8. I'm going to say 6.7. Whoops, sorry about that. So uh, 6... Here's 6, 6, 7, I'll say is there, and that is 4.8. I'll say it's about there. And then we have 7, 0, oh, and 6, 1. I'll say that's about there. 7, 3, and 5, 9, about there. 8, 3, and 7, 1. About here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 2, 4, 6, 8. Good. And now I want to try to estimate the best fitting line, the line that kind of splits the difference between all of them. And so I'm going to draw it about there. Okay. All right. So uh, when you're drawing that, you're going to do the best you can, and I'm not going to uh, get. Uh, terribly uh, picky about that unless you were to do something like draw the line this way when obviously the points are going from upward from left to right okay so make sure that you you do that does the shape look like a straight line is a question we should ask and if it doesn't what shape does it look like so um, this is a key point that you would need to know before we proceed with any analysis we need to plot a scatter diagram and determine if our straight line is the right relationship. Number one, does it exist? Number two, is it the best shape for the line? Okay, so here in the first diagram, there is no um, shape here. It's a circle. So there's no line. There's nothing that would fit. What the computer will do when we calculate the regression line, it will give us a line like that at zero slope. Okay? saying there's no relationship between x and y. Okay. And there really isn't because it's just a cloud of dots. Now, in this next one, I can fit the best uh, fitting line about there, a straight line. But that's not the best shape for this line. The best shape for this would be something about there. And I'm a little off, but you get the picture. It's a curve. Now, for this next one, this is a positive slope. And the last one would be a negative slope. And yes, those two look about like a straight line. All right. So let's talk about the sample correlation coefficient. It's a value between negative 1 and positive 1. Okay. And it talks about the strength of the linear or straight line relationship between two variables. And we're going to call them x and y. It's also unitless. So... Um, the units cancel out. doesn't matter what units you use. You're going to get the same answer for R. So you don't have to worry about changing units. If R is equal to 1, we have what we call a perfect positive linear correlation. You see all the lines, all the dots are exactly on the line, and the slope is going upward. So that's a positive perfect correlation. If R is negative 1, then there's a perfect negative correlation. Again, all the points are exactly on the line. Okay, So the question here is, um, what does R uh, of, point, of negative 0.5 look like? Well, let me show you about what that might look like. Uh, first, I'm going to do negative 0.8. So a negative 0.8 might look like that. 
And then a negative 0.5 might, you see there's more spread. The data is more spread out. And then a negative 0.2 might look like that, okay? So the, the closer we get to zero, the more spread out the data is. The closer we get to, um, this is negative, the closer we get to negative one or positive one, the closer the points get to the line. So uh, even though I use negative 0.5 here um, in this second one, negative 0.5, just switch the direction to being upward, and you're going to see that's about the 0.5, okay? Same thing for the negative 0.2. A positive 0.2 looks about the same way, except it's sloped a little more um, upward than it is uh, downward, okay? So the sign of R determines if the slope is positive or negative. If R is negative, the slope is negative. If R is positive, the slope is, is positive. So if r is 0, there is no linear association between x and y. Here are two cases where you're going to get r equals 0. So here the computer is going to draw a line like this, and here the computer is going to draw a line like this, and it's going to say there is no linear association. Here there is no relationship between x and y, no association whatsoever. Here we have a perfect quadratic uh, association, a parabola. It's perfect. But because it's not a straight line, R is going to be calculated as zero. It's not the right shape, okay? Key point, but you'll notice the reason for that is that uh, how this is shaped. If, if we had something like this, which would be part of a um, uh, parabola, but not the whole thing, then you'd still be able to put a line through there, but it wouldn't be the best shape to have for this. And there's other analyses that we can use if it's not a straight line. We won't learn those in this course, but you need to know that they're out there. So again, the closer R is to negative 1 or R is to positive 1, okay? In other words, the absolute value of R, as it gets closer to 1, the better a line describes the relationship between X and Y. Okay, positive values for R imply that X increases. As X increases, Y tends to increase. In other words, on average, Y increases. Negative values of R imply that as X increases, we always talk about X increasing. As X increases, Y tends to now decrease, or on average, Y decreases. The value of R is going to be the, res the same um, it doesn't matter which variable is used for x or which variable is used for y. In other words, x comma y or y comma x. Um, it's going to give the same value of r. When we get to linear regression, it absolutely matters which one's which. But for correlation, it does not. And the value of r does not change um, when either variable is converted to different units. It doesn't matter the units. Again, I, I told you earlier, it's unitless, so the units cancel out. So there's no need to go trying to make them the same units, um, x and y. Just leave them as they are, they're fine. Okay, I want you to read pages 147 to 148. It's the section called Development of the Formula for R. And that's as far as we're going to go in this video. Um, it is important that you do this that you read this assignment. I'm not expecting you to uh, understand everything, but I want you to have an idea of how it was developed. So, um, and I put this slide in the wrong spot, so we'll skip that. Uh, remember to scan in your lecture notes for this video before midnight uh, on the date that's listed on the course calendar. So before midnight of the date that's listed on the course calendar, that's when it's due. There, They should be neat for you. Update your formula sheet. By the way, you can have definitions of the symbols on the formula sheet. If you have questions, come to my virtual office hours. I'm happy to help you. If none of them work for you, which I have a lot of different office hours, so something should work for you, then by all means, email me. But tell me exactly what problem you have and send me a picture of the problem and your work, 
and I will be able to get back to you very quickly and help you out. We'll see you next time.